How's it going, everyone? Daniel Rodriguez here. It's time to do a spoiler review for 10 Cloverfield Lane. Now, if you want to see my regular non-spoiler review, which is about 10 minutes long, 11 minutes long, link is down below. That's where I just give you the pros, cons, and final score. Here, I'm going to be talking about the movie from the beginning to the end, giving you my opinions, my thoughts, what should have happened, what shouldn't have happened, what I hated, what I loved. I'm not really doing a pros, cons sort of thing. I'm just going with it as I go along, man. Uh, I don't do many spoiler reviews. I only do them really for superhero movies or, you know, stuff like that. Now, but uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane is one movie where when I saw it, I was like, oh my god, I gotta talk about this movie. I gotta get it off my chest. I gotta tell people uh, who've seen the movie and want to hear my opinion. This is basically, this is what it's here for, man. Anyway, make sure you have seen 10 Cloverfield Lane because I do not want to be spoiling it for you guys. Uh, if you haven't seen it, watch the movie. It's already a go. Yes, watch it, please. I gave it an 8.5 out of a 10 on uh, my non-spoiler review. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Let's get right to it. I'm reading from Wikipedia. I've already seen the movie, obviously. I think if you're watching this, you've seen the movie. But I want to refresh my brain. I want to read every detail there. Yes, Wikipedia. Yes, people, you know, insert stuff. But it's... It's... I know the movie, so just saying in case, like, Wikipedia, really, you're reading it from Wikipedia? Why? Well, it's just because I don't want to go to no other site just to read what, what's been going on, you know, blah, blah, like, I could read just right here what the plot is. It'd be easier for me to re-step it and go from the beginning to the end because my mind is bad and I'm only 18. <laughs> my mind, my mind's really bad to remember some things, but I do, this movie's a really memorable movie, but just not, like, every single damn shot, I can't really remember that. Anyway, I'm going to go through the first paragraph and then tell you my thoughts on what happened, man. Let's go in depth here. Following an argument with her fiancé, Michelle drives through rural Louisiana late at night. She is involved in a car accident. She awakes in a concrete room chained to a wall with a saline drip in her arm. Her apparent capture, Howard, tells her that he will keep her alive and prevents her from escaping. All right, so that is the first. Uh, that's the first um, part of it. So in the beginning, you know, Michelle was following the argument. Uh, we obviously saw her on the phone. I'm assuming she was either fighting with her boyfriend or whatever, and she ended up leaving him. Uh, so then she went to the gas station. We saw Howard's truck arrive. I don't know if that was actually Howard. You could tell John Goodman kind of fat fingers up in there. Uh, you know, uh, you know. So he ended up following her. And then basically she wakes, you know, she's in the car crash in IMAX. It's a beautiful sound, man. I, you know the car crash is coming, but not at the exact moment when it happened. I literally leaned forward in the theater and boom! And I was all like, what? Like that? I was like, oh, this shit. I hope people don't think I'm having a seizure or something. Because I literally went like that. Like I literally, and the, the car crash, the car was like, really awesome, man. I love the effects in there too. Really looked good. I don't have my contacts on. I have to go to this. So then, you know, she's involved in a car accident. She awakes in a concrete chain, uh, you know, in a room. That was really creepy for me, man. That scene went on quite some time, but I love the way she was, like, reacting to everything, man. Uh, she, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, man, played Michelle. Very fantastic in here. She was really awesome. Great to see her in something new. And she was changed. She's like, no, no. And then she's freaking out, like, holy shit. What? And, like, and then she's looking at her phone, you know, she ends up grabbing her phone, which took some time, man, just to even get the, the IV. She pulls the IV out and everything. Imagine you're in pain, your leg's hurting, you're stuck. I mean, you just get, you imagine just being in that position, dude. You don't know what's going on. You don't know the world is ending, man. You don't know what's going on. You're in a, who would, who abducted me, man? So that thing going through your mind, like, holy shit, and you're seeing this going on, man. And she ends up getting the uh, the phone and all that, and there's no service. She's looking up, and then all of a sudden you hear John Goodman, man, the boom, 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 coming in, man. And, of course, he doesn't talk. He just gives food. I think he's like, you need to eat. And that's about it. He walks out. Uh, so all that stuff went on, man. He basically, I'm keeping you alive. He doesn't really say much. He's just kind of there at the beginning, just like, he's not like, hey, you were in a car accident. I saved you. You want to go up and eat some food? Like, he's literally just like, you should eat. And then just walks away. It's sort of like that. Lord, like, maybe he should explain himself a little bit better. But uh, you know how Howard is, man. How John Goodman was just so freaking crazy from the start. Howard tells her that some sort of attack 
has taken place, for which he blames either the Russians or Martians, a la aliens, and that he has brought her to his doomsday bunker after finding her on the side of the road. Uh, then she meets Emmett, obviously played by John Gallagher Jr., another survivor who confirms that he saw the attack firsthand and came to the bunker to survive. Now, that whole part there, man, you know, where she, he's basically explaining everything, like how he worked for Satellite and, like, how he could be Russians or stuff like that, and then meeting Emmett, that was weird because I didn't expect it when she was walking in the hall and then Emmett was like... Psh! And it was another one of those, like, oh, shit, like, what's going on? And it was him and, like, all the cans fall and everything. And, uh, you know, he has the bruise, but we heard him earlier sort of thing when John Goodman was yelling, what the hell did you do? And then he goes to the back, and then you never see Emmett until we meet him in the hallway. Uh, and he's, I think, snacking on some, he's a uh, goldfish or something. He's like, want some? You want some now? Uh, you know, so basically... Uh, you know, it was interesting because he ended up talking about how he fought his way inside and everything, and that's how he broke his arm, or at least that's how, you know, he says what happened. But that was very interesting to say where he was outside and he saw that bright red flash of light, man, and she's kind of thinking, like, well, you know, that's kind of thinking, what the hell was it? And it's never really explained what that big bright red flash is, you know? Uh, I can only speculate. It's either the aliens invading, or it was it was a natural thing. It was an explosion of a nuclear. I don't know really because we never got to see much of the city after that. We never even got. I, I really wish they could have gone back to Emmett when he was talking about it, him during the thing. I would have really loved to see that play out, but they never ended up doing that, which is fine. Being in the bunker ninety five percent of the time, it's not a bad thing. It's more of a claustrophobic IMAX experience, more of an experience than anything really. This movie. But I really would have really, you know, been interested to see his background when, you know, when it was going down. But the whole thing is mystery, obviously. But what could that bright light, bright, bright light be? Could it be the aliens attacking, a nuclear, is Cloverfield in New York? You know, but obviously a few years past, so, you know, it's not, again, a direct sequel. But what's, you know, I'm assuming aliens just attacked like that and pew, 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 pew. I don't know even if... I don't even know if these aliens have guns, and they're like, beep, beep, beep. I, I don't even know, because assuming these aliens are, like, a bunch of army of aliens, like, ha-ha, meow, 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 you know, uh, I'm assuming they're just, like, weird, like, Wee! and they, like, they don't talk or anything, they're just kind of, like, eat people, I don't, I, I don't really understand, uh, we never got to see them, obviously, so they're at dinner, and Michelle flirts with Emmett to provoke Howard, and uses the opportunity to steal his keys, this was another awesome scene, man, uh, that table, and then when he's eating the spaghetti, he's like, mmm, oh, Howard, this is some good sauce, oh my, this is the best sauce I've ever eaten, well, besides that, and, you know, going up there and blistering to death and dying, this is, this is, I mean, God beans, this is the best spaghetti sauce I've ever tasted, are you mocking, are, are, are you, are, are you being sarcastic, <laughs> and he's just like, oh, n no, no, why don't you shut your mouth? Michelle doesn't like it. I don't like it. And Michelle's just kind of looking like, like to the, like, like she's liking Emmett. She's bonding as a friend with him. I don't know if it was more of a, like a lovey-dovey relationship, more of like, hey, this guy's safe. I know he's not going to like, he's not a crazy as Howard. I could work with this guy. This guy, I oh. Almost like Bill Murray in Stripes. I like you. I want to party with you, man. Me and you, forget it, you know, that sort of scene there, uh, you know, around that sort of thing. But, that again, that's a very memorable scene with it, and he ends up getting up, and I believe he's like, Michelle's like, and he's like, what's wrong? Nothing, nothing. And he ends up getting up for some, for some reason, and he's like, you will behave. And, like, she ends up stealing the keys, which for some reason, he looked at Emmett and he didn't feel the keys you know, I, I'm assuming he just didn't pay attention. You think he's such a he's such a precise guy, really. Like, he he always catches them doing something, but the one time she grabs his keys, he doesn't even see or feel it. Uh, so that happens, man. She attempts to escape through the airlock on the top floor of the bunker, but discovers a woman suffering from a severe skin infection, begging to get into the bunker. Now realizing that some sort of attack has actually happened, she returns to the bunker. 
Uh, that whole scene there, she smashes the beer bottle, man. She ends up, I didn't she flip the flip the table or no? She jumps over the table. Emmett's just kind of like, oh, and I think Emmett tries to storm him, doesn't he? Emmett tries to go to Howard, and Howard is like, yeah, get down, bitch, and he ends up running. And uh, I love that whole scene in IMAX because when she hits him with the glass, it's almost like a distorted sound, like a. Pss was it was it orchestra music or was it like a like a silent like disordering sound? And I love the way John Goodman, the way that it shot the camera, he's like, Psh! and like he's moving back or even more in the seat, like he's like slow motion look like side of like, ah. and it takes him a while to get up, man. And then when he gets up, he's like, ah, because he takes him a while to get up them stairs, dude. Because she's like, you know, she's it took. I was literally starting, I think, like, the trailers were lying to us, and he was going to grab her or something and throw her down the stairs or something like that. But that was, my heart was beating fast. I was like, in my mind, I was like, hurry, 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 open the door. Come on, how, how, come on. And she was like, like, I, she took a while to open that last lock, dude, man. Very, you know, took a while, but she got it, man. But still, seeing that woman, I don't know what I could think about that, the woman with the skin and everything. I really didn't care really for that scene because I thought that we we're going to see like a monster or something or we, and, and I mean that's okay but the girl with her skin I really can't tell why she was like that I guess from the alien gas or something but she was like it's almost like she was like hey but she was already crazy in the mind I guess that gas makes you crazy or else you're just I don't know she was burning alive really and she was like oh let me in bitch that and she started going hard and hitting her head so obviously it messes with your brain and um, you know, chemicals and all that, I'm assuming, uh, so that's a slow, painful death, and you're going insane, so that's pretty shitty to go out, man, but, you know, whatever, I'm moving on from that, over the next few weeks, the trio gets along, and they end up, you know, putting the, the jukebox and everything, uh, I think we're alone now, of course, the song, man, they're making, um, sandwiches and all that sort of stuff, Howard loans Michelle some clothing from Megan, his daughter, and shows Michelle her picture, that other I mean, because every time earlier in the movie he was like, um, oh, she was like, ah, oh, Michelle or something like that or Megan, and he was kind of like, my daughter, and then he just kind of walks away. So you could tell you're actually thinking like, oh yeah, I liked his daughter, like obviously his daughter, you know, he doesn't want to talk about it, you know, but it even gets weirder, man. Uh, later on, when the air filtration unit breaks down, Howard asks Michelle to climb up through the duct work to reset the system as she is the only one small enough to fit. Um, basically there, man, you know, people were saying because it was like, ah, it's blocked, like the thing is blocked so we can't open it, but what was blocking it? There was no explanation with what was really blocking it because obviously he could open it before and it wasn't opening then, so what was blocking it then? You know, some people are saying that. I really, I got to see this movie a good two, three more times, really, to understand the whole. I mean, I understood a lot of it. It wasn't like a movie when I walked out of it. I was like, what happened? Like, I got, it's like Inception. What happened? No, it's not like that. I understood everything when I walked out. But it's a movie I want to see over and over again. And definitely just, I, I'd pay five, six bucks to see it again and again and again and again if I could not. Uh, but that scene definitely her claustrophobic again going into uh, going into the vents and like uh, he Howard's just like hey Michelle just like that all like freaky and all that that was really nice nice little touch there and of course the cinematography was awesome with the, the vents and everything imagine her crawling through that you know filming whatever um, duck air vent they made just for her to climb in dude that's crazy uh, so where we at where we at where we at uh, she discovers a window with the word help scratched on the inside and a bloody earring which she recognizes from a picture Howard had shown her of Megan, his daughter. She knows the picture of Emmett who... Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. She shows the picture to Emmett who recognizes the person as a missing girl from his high school, Brittany, not Howard's daughter. Realizing that Howard is dangerous, they begin to plan an escape. Uh, man, this is where it gets even more intense, honestly, dude. With them, you know, I remember seeing that help scratch thing, dude, and I was thinking, holy shit, like, for one thing, if, if Brittany reached that far, why didn't she just stay there? Like, I'd rather die of food and hunger than go back to the Howard, you know what I mean? Like, I'd rather just... Why didn't she just stay in that room and die? Why did she go back? Sort of thing. 
Unless that air block thing that it was, that's where he could reach the inside, I'm assuming. Over there. I'm not sure completely. Uh, but definitely when Emmett was like, oh no, that's the girl that went missing. Like, I was like, well, that's some weird storytelling. Like, the one time he sees a picture in the bloody earring and, like, Emmett's like, no, Howard can't do that. No, 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 no. Wait, maybe? Huh. You know, like, sort of, like, almost like he was almost kind of, like, doing that, and then they basically, like, oh, shit, we gotta get out of here, Howard is dangerous, we'd rather burn out there, or we die in here, I think going outside is a better idea, man, quicker death than what Howard will do with your body. So, uh, anyway, Michelle fashions a makeshift biohazard suit from a shower curtain, and Emmett assembles a homemade gas mask. When Howard discovers the tools they've stolen from their work, he confronts the pair and dissolves the tools in a vat of perchloric acid. Now that scene there, man, definitely, uh, it was so out of, like, it was weird because I like the whole scene of them making the biohazard suit and everything, which is, they're really smart to make because they had the books and everything, but I mean, I never heard about that. I guess you can make an actual biohazard suit out of curtains and claw clothes and I guess that's a thing. I guess that's very secure. Even if you put duct tape, it's secure from outside radiation. Well, that I, I never knew that. Unless that's just part of the movie-wise, but thanks to J.J. Uh, Abrams for that. And uh, Dan Transberg. Now, when the, he confronts them, dude, definitely, uh, I had no idea what was going to come next, dude. He And I didn't know, because I thought he was just going to show them the acid because he was going to clean, he was going to clean the bathroom because, remember, Emmett was like, is that 16 candles? That's pretty in pink. Idiot. 16 candles. Obviously, it's pretty in pink. Do you not remember the dad? She walks in. She's like, what are you doing earlier in the morning? Well, I'm making breakfast, you know? And he has a cigarette and everything. Easily from pretty in pink, man. Fucking Team Ducky. Either way, going on from that. Uh, no, Emmett's pretty cool, dude. But it's sad the way how he ended up in this movie. John Gallagher Jr. didn't get the two cents he deserved, man. But uh, really good acting here as well from him. He was a very enjoyable character, very comic relief character. But uh, this is where he... And he was like... Gray hair everywhere. What were you doing with this? And he has the scissors and she's like... Oh, shit. You know, Emmett's like... Fuck. And basically, hmm, we do not need these. Just dissolve, freaking Breaking Bad style. Uh, fuck, gonna make meth and everything. Either way, uh, I did not, again, I thought the acid was gonna be used to clean the bathroom, because, well, it's pretty in pink. When he saw it, he was like, hey, don't, you know, you ever think when Megan was near the bunker or whatever, or that stuff, that she could have got radiation when she opened that door? You... You don't know, because she took a bath, so you don't know if there's radiation inside there, and that's where he was kind of thinking. He was like, pause the movie. I thought that's why he was getting the acid, but, uh, stupid me, obviously, that you're not going to clean it with acid. Emmett takes the blame, and Howard shoots him dead with a headshot. Uh, yeah, that scene definitely, again, IMAX sound, and it did a disorder, and, you know, he was like, I apologize, Howard, I just wanted to make a weapon where Michelle could look at me and respect me just like she respects you. I just wanted that respect. And then, you know, I apologize. Apology accepted. Right in the head, dude. And that I did not see that coming again, dude. I felt bad for him, dude. Cause it, well, at least he died quickly like that, dude. And he, he's gone, you know, wherever his soul goes, man, he's gone. He escaped that hell, dude. So that's a good thing for Emmett, man. God bless that guy. Uh, but, you know... You know, that stuff happens, uh, and I, I believe afterwards, Michelle works to complete the biohazard suit, but is discovered by Howard. Yeah, that scene, dude, because I remember she was working on everything, and Howard comes in, he's like fixing the, oh, that's where the ice cream, like, oh, Megan liked ice cream in a bowl and everything. And he shaved, too. This guy's fucking crazy. He shaves after killing Emmett. And he's like, no, 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 there, there. I'm gonna get rid of. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this mess. And you're thinking like, God, this is bad. This is really gonna be sucky for Michelle. You know, 
because uh, you're feeling for Michelle, dude. You're scared for her. You don't want her to die. You don't want her to get hurt. But, you know, something's going to go down, man. Uh, so anyway, discovered by Howard, man, he ends up seeing and he gets so freaking pissed off. She manages to get past him and dumps the vat of acid on him, severely injuring him and starting a fire. Oh yeah, that scene, dude, when she ran and she, you know, and she locked him. I thought she locked him inside the room because I thought you had to lock it from the outside and you can't open it from the inside. I thought she, I thought she closed it shut, but I guess he somehow escaped. And then, you know, right when he was like... He was saying something, and then she freaking kicks the... And he has the gun. I don't know why he just didn't shoot her in the leg or something. He ends up pulling the acid. He falls on the acid. She gets past him, and the fire begins. Dude, that was another very uh, well-shot scene. Um, she climbs back through the duct tape, seeing, seeing, Emmett in the, seeing Emmett in the Pedro acid, puts on the suit, and attempts to escape. Howard tries stabbing Michelle through the vents, but she manages to evade the attacks and pulls her way to the air filtration unit and uses a spray compound to freeze the lock on the outside door and break it. Yeah, uh, again, he's burning, man, and, and the effects are so well done, dude. I really loved it, and John Goodman was amazing to the end, dude. He was like, stay with me, and he was freaking... And the, uh, the IMAX sound again, dude, the knife... <laughs> And he just, oh, I, you don't expect it, dude. It was literally something out of a horror movie where you're just like, wee, 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 wee. I mean, literally, just going freaking crazy at a dude, you know, the vents and the fuck samurai sword, no, but it's a knife and everything. I'm surprised she didn't get stabbed one bit, dude. That was very, you would think since she has her, uh, oh, she didn't put her has back, like her biohazard suit yet, I don't think so. She had it through her leg. But, uh, you know, that's the end of Howard, basically, man. That was him. He's stuck in the bunker. He's not going to fit his fat ass. Well, no, technically, I know he's burning, but he technically could go through the two bunker doors and go outside if he wanted to, really, let's be honest. Um, but that happened, man. Uh, outside, she sees an extraterrestrial craft hovering in the distance. As she stares in disbelief, the underground bunker explodes, attracting the craft's attention which releases a gra ground scout to investigate. This is the scene, man, where you're outside and you're literally thinking to yourself, Howard was lying. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. Like, I literally was thinking that. I was like, holy shit, nothing was wrong. Literally, I was literally thinking like, oh wow, there's, she's free, that's it. The air is clean, she takes off her mask and everything, and then she hears that loud helicopter like, <sighs> noise. She goes up on the truck, you know, you're going to look, and in the distance, a fucking alien ship. And at that moment, I was like, oh. and you know what she says? Really? And that's what I was thinking, I was like, because imagine if you just fucking escaped a bunker with a psychopath. You escape, and then like, oh, oh, God, yes, I'm alive. Aliens? Really? Really? Are you really? Are you? Oh, my God. Now I got to fight aliens? I just escaped a fucking monster. Now I have aliens, dude. And imagine Bradley Cooper, the guy, obviously, you know Bradley Cooper. He voiced her boyfriend. I'm assuming her boyfriend looked like Bradley Cooper. So that means Bradley Cooper is probably dead. That's bad, man. That's bad to think about that. Her family's probably dead. People you love are probably dead. If you were in this movie, and in this world, you'd probably be dead. By aliens. God. It's freaking scary, dude. It's a very scary thing to imagine, dude. Anyway, she, Michelle attempts to get into a car, but sets off the alarm, attracting the scout's attention. She hides in a shed where she finds the corpse of, a, of the woman who attempted to get into the bunker. She takes the woman's car keys and tries to escape, but is cornered in. Howard's truck... Thought I saw something. I'm freaking myself out. Howard's truck... Oh, wait. And tries to escape, but is cornered in. Howard's truck by the scout. The alien craft picks up the car and lifts it towards its beak-like mouth. But Michelle assembles a Molotov cocktail and throws it into the mouth, destroying the craft. Uh, again, that IMAX sound, dude, she's running from that, like, leopard sort of 
cheetah alien. Uh, very well done. The effects were really good for 15 million, dude. And she was hiding. And it even moved the car, that monster. And it was so ugly, dude. When it moved in, I thought it was going to see Michelle, but it never saw Michelle because she ended up doing the tick tick and the car made a sound and it left. But literally, did you see, like, it opened its mouth and it was like, and then, like, a green little, another mouth came out, like, and it had, like, eyes and all that. I was like, what the, what the fuck is this? Do all aliens in movies have to be, like, non-talkative? Why can't aliens be, like, like the Martian from the 90s or something, like, with that, like, and, and, and like, the brains are, like, pew, 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 pew. why can't we have aliens like that anymore, man? I thought, if I think aliens would actually have ray guns and be, like, pew, 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 pew. but now they're all just, like, monsters, like, tentacles. Fucking Independence Day here, man. What about those, like, pew, 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 ha, what should I get you know, nothing like that anymore, man. I guess they don't make it like that, but uh, that's cool. You know, I, I, I like the design, man. I was like, oh, shit. It looked pretty ugly, man. It looks pretty ugly. Oh, but that that's the unrealistic thing I was talking about in my non-spoiler review. I was like, oh, my God. Look, and when she was in the truck, when it was getting picked up, she was kind of like, shit. I'm going to die. Like, literally, she was like, I give up. I give up. Just just eat me already. And then she saw the alcohol and she's like... <sighs> and then she puts the stuff together. But really, that monster was taking its time with it, picking up the truck. That monster could have was like... <clears throat> but no, it took forever. It was like... Hey, I'm just going to give you time to make that Molotov in there. You need a little bit of a break? Well, let me go a little slower. And like, you know, like... And then, like, she had to get out of the car, like, roll the window down. It takes 20 seconds long. Yeah, let, let, me, let me give you time to roll down that window. I want to see if you have a shot. Now, I'm going to open my mouth at the exact time to, hit, you know, give you a head start. And then, like, she throws it exactly. What happens if the wind blew and, like, the Molotov, like, fell on her head? Like, no! That would have been crazy, too. But that was, like, so unrealistic. And Gene's very lucky for that, dude. Oh! <sighs> And then it blows up. She destroyed an alien craft. She was probably the first of her kind to destroy an alien craft. So, uh, kudos to that. As she drives away, she hears a message on the radio stating that humanity is winning the fight and instructing survivors to evacuate north of Baton Rouge, but asking for anyone with medical or combat experience to come to Houston. Remembering her regrets about running away from a difficult situation, she stops the car and turns on the road to Houston as lightning flashes and an even larger alien ship is seen floating above. A great way to end the movie, man. A great shot. And then definitely they had the mailbox that said 10 Cloverfield, obviously, a.k.a. 10 Cloverfield Lane. Very beautiful shot, man. I was really, uh, really happy with the way they ended up, you know, editing it, the producing it, the effects, uh, the directing, the music. Everything about it, man, was awesome. The acting, John Goodman, obviously, from Howard, John Gallagher Jr., Emmett, and Mary Elizabeth Weinstead. Um, of course, played uh, uh, Michelle. Guys, comment down below. Tell me your favorite parts about 10 Cloverfield Lane. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. Again, I gave this movie an 8.5 out of 10. I basically recapped the whole movie, but gave you my opinions on what was happening during the movie. This was my spoiler review. Uh, if you guys want to just, you know, comment, tell me how I did, or tell me what you thought about the movie, I'd really appreciate that. If you want to support the channel, hit that subscribe button, and if you want to see my 10-minute non-spoiler review where I give you the pros, cons, and final score, you guys can see that as well. Until next time, bye-bye.